I have a very, very significant and very, very important video. It's not often I come to you and say two things. Number one, watch all of it because number seven, the seventh thing I will tell you on this video is probably the most significant. Number six and seven actually match. And you're going to hear something that I have taught for 20 years. As a matter of fact, when Hillary Clinton announced that she was going to run for president, I was sharing with people about the vision from 1933, asking the question, could she be the person to fulfill it? Well, she wasn't, obviously. But now with Harris in as the vice president, then I see a great possibility of this being fulfilled. And what is odd, even the secular media has discussed this. Now, let me backtrack to the original story and the original vision. Many years ago, there was a man who was very well known that had a tremendous ministry and a tremendous gift that God had given him. I never met him personally. I do know, however, the man who's in his 80s that lives in our town that was his organ player for his crusades and evangelistic meetings. I have met numerous pastors who experienced this man's ministry and said it was the most amazing thing that they ever saw. For those who knew him personally, they loved him and they knew he was an absolute man of God who never missed his words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecies, or if he said he had a vision. And let me reiterate this. Those who knew him say he never missed it, ever. Now, is that possible? It's possible through fasting and praying and seeking God, yes, to train your spirit to hear that way. But this was a gift from God. In the 1940s and 50s uh, and very early 60s, he had some of the most remarkable answers to prayer. He would actually pray with people on a platform and you would see God heal the person touch the person, deliver the person. And I don't have time to tell all the stories, but in June of 1959, he came to preach at a church here in Cleveland, Tennessee. And an angel of the Lord came to him and said, Cleveland, Tennessee will be the hub of the final end time revival. And we've talked about that for many years here in Cleveland, and we won't go into that again. That's another separate message. He was a young man in his 20s in 1933 and had rented an auditorium to preach an evangelistic revival. He had just bought a 1933 Ford automobile and was on preparing to go to the service. And when he sat in his car, he went into a complete vision. I mean, right in front of him, he saw this begin to happen. Um, this is similar to what the Bible calls in the Old Testament, where Peter went into a trance in uh, the book of Acts there, where God was informing him about Cornelius. He, after coming out of the trance and the seven part vision, he wrote it down on a yellow piece of paper and put it in his Bible with the heading, I saw the end time coming. Uh, and, and, and so this is where we get into the story. I'm going to not get into the four things that have already happened. They were, he was told in 1933, there will be three great isms, communism, fascism, and Nazism. And of course that has happened. There will be one ism at the end, and I think that's globalism. That's my personal opinion. He didn't say that, but that's my opinion. He predicted four events involving Roosevelt, Germany, Hitler, and they all happened. And he also predicted a world war was coming, that Mussolini would rise to power in Italy and invade Africa, which happened. Now, the information that I'm giving to you, I have a collection of books. I have every book from the evangelist of 1948 to about 1955, uh, and I don't want to name them, that came out of the great revival, they called it the healing revival, that my father actually was converted to the Lord and called to preach during that time for him as well. And so this information came from reel-to-reel -reel tapes where in the 50s and 60s, this minister uh, named William Branham would speak and he would begin to talk about this. Now, I have a very small booklet that has all the information in it. So I went to that booklet again from real to real tapes to give you the information. When he got into the fifth, sixth and seventh vision, here is what he saw. 
He saw what cars would look like in 1933. He saw what cars would look like prior to the return of the Lord. Just bef- th- now, these are quotes. Just before that time comes, the final ism, automobiles will look like an egg. Now, they were rec- all of them were long rectangles back then and were for many years. That's the way they will be just before the rapture. So I'm going to show you some pictures of automobiles that are in the shape of eggs. And these little, uh, it almost looks like a, a huge egg that you stand in and you move around in. And you can use this on sidewalks, moving from one comp- corporate building to the other, etc. But automobiles are in that shape. And here's the second thing you saw in automobiles. Quote, it will come to pass that cars will not be run by a steering wheel. It will be something another run them, to run them. Now, I'm going to, I'm quoting him. His grammar was very poor, but I'm quoting him as, I'm not misquoting or, or trying to be improper in my English grammar. This is how he spoke. He's very, very simple uh, man. It will be something else that will run them like, a, and I put in here, remote control. You can't hit another car because it's remote. This was 1933 before any of this stuff was developed, which was many, many years later. Here's another quote from a real to real message that I have uh, in, in print. I saw a family driving an automobile that was glass top, didn't exist back then, and didn't have a steering wheel. It was controlled by some sort of radar or something. He didn't even know how it was controlled. They were playing games while it drove itself. Now, folks, listen to me. We're here. So that's what makes me believe that now what he saw with a woman becoming president could happen in the next few years with Kamala Harris moving from vice president to president. But I want to show you the end result of what he saw when this happens. Now, He's preaching in the 1950s, telling people this. He repeated it about four times in major meetings. America will become ruled by a woman. These are the quotes. Here's a quote from Teaching on Moses, May 13, 1956. A woman will take the place of a president or something great and high power in America. Here's a third quote. I predict before the coming of the Lord, a woman shall arise to be the leader. I saw a woman that will either be president or or, or become some great power of some sort in the United States before. This is very interesting. The annihilation of the world. In other words, this would be this is how I take this. This would be a sign that somewhere in the future, something is going to happen that's going to bring annihilation to the world. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Let me go back to a story. I was going to preach a message in Huntington, West Virginia, at one of my big conferences called, Will America Have a Woman President? And I received a visit from someone who was a former worker in the White House with direct connections to Bill and Hillary Clinton. This person had been there during what was called the Y2K uh, turnover with the computers and was helping with that project. She heard Hillary talk about becoming a senator in New York. She heard Hillary talk about, this is before they left the White House. The Clintons left the White House, of course. And how she wanted to be the first woman president. Well, she was interested in hearing what I was going to say. And I used these predictions to say, could it be? You see, when you don't have a clear word, and I don't have a clear word if it's Harris. I really don't. But my point is that the opportunity could be there because of Biden's health. Uh, He could get sick. I don't know. My point of even saying that is those are possibilities. And even the secular media has said he will stay in for a certain period of time. He'll step down. He's even talked about it, that if he couldn't do it, he'd just step down, you know, say he was sick. And so she then would become president. So is, would she, if she became president, be the person that this man who was a, uh, and if I can use this, there are people that have a prophetic gift who did have a real prophetic gift, who knew how to operate it correctly. Now, now again, people, I know 25 people that I've talked to since I was 18 who knew him personally, who traveled with him. He had meetings in their, in, 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 in their churches when they were kids. And they say, phenomenal, unbelievable, to the point that people followed him he was so much like Christ in his ministry that people began to 
built him up and he told his best friend, God's going to take me because people are exalting me way too high. A man should never, ever be exalted like people are looking at me like I'm Elijah or some, you know, something like that. And the Lord allowed him, I'm not saying the Lord sent it, but he was taken in a car accident uh, and, and could have lived on many years had not that happened. But that's what he said himself. He saw his own death coming and predicted it. Now, here's what I want to say. Only time will tell if this is the season of 2021 to 2024 where she would step in. We do know if she does fulfill this, here's the part that really stirred me. Not the fact that she comes in and not the fact that morals fall. That's already happening and it's going to get worse. Not the fact, you know, that you see um, the different things happening that we who are patriotic Americans, Christians and conservatives see. But here's the part that really, oh, all right. Um, immediately after that, after this person comes to power, who was the woman president, and again, if it's not in 2024, it will be in the future. I saw the United States as one smoldering, burnt over place, blown to bits. It will be near its end at that time. And I'm not going to read into that. Uh, I will give you one more quote. He said, I seen, and, you know, instead of saying, I saw this, I seen what looked like just stumps burning, rocks blown out, and the whole United States look, just looked bare like, like that as far as I could see where I was standing. Now, let me suggest here, and I'm only suggesting volcanic eruptions would do this. Massive earthquakes would do this. Um, as far as the burning part, gas pipes blowing things up, that's how in many areas that would happen. It also could be internal fighting, which I hope to God we never get to that as far as violence in, in that people can agree to disagree or have protest, you know, but not, not the violence, uh, hope. And then, or it can be, it could actually be the invasion from another country, which is very, very possible. And, uh, my father would never want me to share this, uh, it, well, no, he let me share it at times uh, of something that happened to him, but I'm careful with it because there's so many skeptics when it comes to a vision or a dream or someone having a prophetic word or someone who says they've seen an angel because I know there's a lot of flakiness out there with some people. And so that's why I've never shared this because he received a very visitation in Troutman, North Carolina years ago. And, you know, maybe, maybe somewhere down the road, if I get a release, I'll talk about that. So we have cars that look like eggs, driverless cars, cars that can park themselves, cars that can drive themselves. I have a vehicle that if you press a button, you can take your hands off the steering wheel and it just stays between the lines. You know, it just, it's, it's, it's really those, that type of technology has now come, is now here. And again, the, the destruction could be possible. Now, someone said, well, um, you know, I mean, what do you think, um, uh, looking, at, looking at all of this, how do we know that's going to happen? You look at the reputation of the person saying it. Now, he was a controversial person because it wasn't, he, ca he believed that he, was, he came in the spirit of Elijah, the sp not Elijah, but the spirit of Elijah with that anointing. And people cut him down and criticized him. People said he was a prophet, which he actually was, to be honest with you, with these gifts. People cut him down for that. He, uh, he got into doctrine that some of the other Pentecostals totally disagreed with. They cut him down for that. And so, um, you know, you have people who think one thing about him, people that think another thing about him. I'm talking about the man that saw this, but the, the fact is the proof is in the pudding. And uh, people that I, everybody I've talked to said they've never sat under a ministry more powerful than that one. And let me just give you one story I can tell you, and then I'm going to conclude this in just a moment. In the auditorium in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a man named Larry Stevenson was a young man who went to a meeting with this man we're talking about, the minister. And uh, they brought a man and put him in the balcony that had been in a car accident that was paralyzed from his uh, waist down. This minister that had the vision uh, in 1933 was in Chattanooga preaching and stopped preaching. And he said, just a minute, there's a man up in the balcony. Uh, you can't walk from your waist down. You were in a white automobile. You're a ball player. Uh, you, are, you were in the wreck. It's left you paralyzed. You're, they said, you'll never walk. If men will bring you down here and carry you to the platform, God's going to heal you. Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I had friends who are there. They're older ministers now. And they, two guys grabbed him and carried that man, boy, down the steps all the way to that platform. And when, he, when that man re reached his hand out and said, be healed in the name of Jesus, believe it or not, it happened. 
the power of God came to him and he absolutely got 100 percent healed and was a pastor right up the road from here, from Cleveland, Tennessee, up in the next town until he died in his late 70s. And he was a young man, of course, back at that time. Now, think about that. Well, I don't believe in all that. Well, I got news for you. It'll never happen to you. You'll never receive it. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it if you don't believe in it. It'll never happen to you. So I grew up in a culture of faith and a culture of families that believe in God's ability to do these things. Uh, I do not know what else to say to you from that other than giving you the information. And I'm still detailing some other parts to this and adding to it. And I'm, I'm working on a project right now um, that deals with a lot that's going to happen in the next four years. And I'm hoping to get it out to people in the next couple of months. We'll see what happens. I have to follow the, the direction of the Lord. And there are things that we restrain ourselves from saying on social media that we put in books. And that some of that is in that book, The Final Chapters, which is my latest pro prophetic book, if you don't have it. So thank you for joining me. I do want you to share this. I think it's very important to share it. Time will tell who this person will be. But I will tell you in all the times that I have known of this vision and in my lifetime of 61 years, that we now have probably the biggest possibility of having a woman president between now and 2024. And if not, possibly after that, the Lord knows, but he's already told people 1933 what would happen. And he's been so correct on everything else. I personally have no reason to doubt that he didn't hear from the Lord on all these things as well. Thank you for joining me. I want you to ask others to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Our, I think our many messages are very important right now and will be in the time to come. And please share them with others. And uh, I appreciate your time. Watch the manifest telecast. Sometimes we will have every Friday we'll post our, our television program, which is 30 minutes long. Please watch it as well if you don't have a place to watch it on cable or on television. And uh, you can also go to perrystone.org for our information. A special advertisement comes at the end that deals with some of the resources that are available. Thank you for joining me. We are living in epic times. We are the revelation generation, and we must not hide in spiritual darkness, but must clearly understand these prophetic times and seasons. Also informing others that the last days are upon us. Perry Stone and Bill Cloud have joined together for an urgent series of new prophetic updates that are now available to you on CD or DVD. The messages included by Perry are the Hebraic prophetic code concealed in the seventh kingdom parables, America, epicenter of the next revolution, the new 70 year prophetic cycle and latest end time signs, Israel prodigies being fulfilled, final birth pangs of the Messiah, America in crisis, the sign of fires, the ax and the tree, also included in your CD or DVD set are three messages by Bill Cloud that contain amazing prophetic insight. The messages are the beginning of sorrows, when God hides his face, the fight for America. To receive your set of CDs, request offer number 20PS2-CD. They are available for your gift of $60 or more. To receive the DVDs, request offer number 20PS2-DVD. They are available for a gift of $80 or more. You can order online at perrystone.org or by calling toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323. You may also write to us and send a check or money order to Perry Stone Ministries, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. In this day and time, as we continue to experience biblical prophecy unfold, these timely messages are something you will want to share with your entire family and friends. We look forward to hearing from you soon.